Uh, very good evening uh, to everybody watching. Thank you for joining us tonight on the Evening Review. My name is uh, Toivon Jabela, your host. Tonight we are welcoming back to the platform the High Commissioner of uh, the United Kingdom in Nam to Namibia, uh, Charles Moore. Uh, and uh, that is really to help us understand the intricacies of distributing resources, the British resources, to people in Africa, uh, including our country, through schemes like the Shevening Scholarship Scheme that has caused quite a stir uh, this week following the release of the names of the people that are going to the UK to study. Thank you always, uh, High Commissioner, for making <laughs> time. The funny thing is that uh, it's like I always only just invite you whenever there's some sort of uh, uh, controversy, but uh, we, we appreciate that you always make time for us. Thank you, Tova. Well, actually, it's, it's actually a really good opportunity because controversy can be seen in two ways and it, there's always an opportunity to clarify Absolutely. Uh, any sort of misunderstanding. So actually, I really appreciate it. So Absolutely. thank you for having me. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, so the Shevening, uh, I th hope I'm pronouncing it properly. Achieving pro Scholarships. Yes. Um, what is this? So Achieving Scholarships, um, it's been a long-running program of ours that we run around the world, yeah. um, and it offers the opportunity for people who hold bachelor's degrees, yeah. uh, so they've done first degrees, to study in the UK for a one-year master's degree. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, I think the, the US, for example, has a has a, uh, a similar scheme, uh, and, and, and other countries do as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the idea is to, to provide uh, a, a, an upper level of um, education um, which allows somebody to specialise in their chosen field yeah. and then when they return to their home country um, we hope that that will take them into the sort of leadership position in their chosen fields. Yeah. Um, and it's been hugely successful. Uh, Perhaps the most notable Chivney scholar in Namibia is Peter Shavute, who's the uh, Chief Justice. Yeah. Uh, and we're really proud of uh, the contribution we've made around the world to, um, to the education of people who then go on to become leaders in their fields. Yeah. And so yeah. that's what it's designed to do. Okay, wonderful. Um, so it's, it's a scheme of your government and the, the High Commission itself here administered is it or who? who? It's, it's administered centrally in the UK. Yeah. Uh, and so all around the world we work to the same process. Um, applications are done now online. Yeah. Uh, and so they're all done online and submitted centrally to the UK. And then, um, then the UK um, will send it out to us okay. to then take forward the, uh, the, the interviews uh, and the selection process locally. Yeah. Um, how, how does the, um, the selection take place? I mean, in, how, what is the approach to the selection? So everybody starts, you have to start with having having a bachelor's degree. When yeah. you when you apply online, um, there's, it's quite a long application process, but you know, then again, this is, this is for quite a, uh, an intense um, period of study. Yeah. So people have to do things like um, write, write a number of essays, four essays, um, what their job experience has been so far, why they want to do this course, what yeah. it will mean for them, uh, what they will do once they return to their home country with a master's degree, uh, what their other, other interests are, and those sort of issues. Yes. Um, and uh, we couldn't possibly handle all those applications on our own. I mean, we get, for Namibia, we get up to about a thousand applications each year from graduates who yeah. are applying for, um, for a master's. So the initial sift is done in the UK, and that's where they will um, quality control the, the, the applications. And you know, some people won't have answered the question properly. They won't, uh, they won't have given a, a good reason for why they want to study. They might not have had the job experience, yeah. any number of reasons. And so we get then uh, a, sifted, a sifted number of applications. Uh, from which we have to then choose um, how many to interview. And so we, we normally get um, 
probably about uh, 80 to 100 applications uh, to us and we choose uh, probably about um, 70 or so to, to, to interview. Okay. And, and, and who, 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 um, who helps your, your mission, the, the, the High Commission, to now... Oh, I suppose, okay, so you, you, you interview all those. Um, do you have a panel or who does yeah. the... We set up a panel. Um, yeah. There's normally three people on the panel. Okay. Uh, there has to be a, a UK-based member of staff, so it's usually my Deputy High Commissioner who, who uh, leads the panel. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we, have, we have a scholarships officer who works for us in my team. Mm. Um, uh, she sits on the panel as well. And then we normally use somebody who is a chevener, who has done chevening. Um, uh, so they know the process, they've been through it. Yeah. Um, and that's usually a Namibian uh, national who, who helps us on the panel. So um, there's a UK national, there's a British High Commission uh, staff officer, and there's a, and there's a chevener who's, who's been through the process. Okay. And, and, and that uh, British, uh, that um, High Commission staff member mm. is, um, it, it could be anyone or is that position usually held by a person from the UK? No, it's not. I mean, one, we, we, we've got um, uh, what we call country-based staff who work, who work for us. And mm. um, one of those, um, we're all multi-hatted because we're quite a small mission. Yeah. But uh, one of those is our political officer who also covers scholarships um, and communications. Yeah. So um, she, she coordinates all the, uh, the Chevening Scholarship applications um, in the year and, and helps out with the, all the Chevening administration that happens. Yeah. So, like in this case now, you you had two Namibians on the panel, or is it? Uh, well, I mean, by by coincidence, actually, no. Our, our scholarships officer is actually Zambian. Okay. So, um, no, there's only one Namibian on on our panel at the moment, but it changes from year to year. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. No, no, it makes sense because I needed to just lay that gra that ground, um, because. One of the things, I mean, a lot of accusations have been made. Uh, yeah, you know, it's heavily skewed in, in favor of one ethnic group in the country. And one of the questions that some of us asked ourselves in the newsrooms was to say, because uh, I don't, I can't think of any reason why a British government, with its reputation, would uh, favor a tribe in Namibia. But then we started going through the process and thinking, okay, maybe the panel itself maybe it was overstaffed with people from that ethnic group or something like that and therefore mm -hmm. in their conscious or subconscious minds then ended up giving out uh, um, uh, scholarships in that way uh, does group identity things like your tribe your race does it uh, appear anywhere on the forms when people are filling in these things no and i'm i'm glad your news have thought like that because I also couldn't think of any reason why we might want to favour any any particular ethnic group, yeah. um, and I was and I was quite clear at the, at, at the beginning of, uh, of of this issue on social media, ethnic ethnic grouping, ethnic origin of uh, the applicants is is completely and utterly irrelevant. Um, there is no part of the application form which asks for ethnicity. Um, it is not part of the form that we, uh, we are interested in at all. I mean, it, it, is, it is a question of which nationality you are. So people are Namibian. Mm. Um, being British, I'm afraid, I, I mean, I, I, I understand the sort of ethnic groupings of the country. I recognize that there are, you know, 50% of the country are of Ambo, um, less than 10% are, you know, each of all the other tribes. Mm. So. It, there, there is clearly a majority of of, of, uh, of Ambo uh, in this country. Um, I have absolutely no idea whether a surname is is of Ambo, Herrero, or anything else. Um, it's 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 not something that we are um, that we're looking at. So categorically, uh, the tribal ethnicity of somebody plays really no part in 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 this uh, selection process at all. Yeah. Was the commission was the commission aware after the outcomes have come out, and even prior to the announcement and the supposed storm that that happened this week, uh, were were you as a mission aware that wow this is actually how it came out and uh, 
did you anticipate any of this? What happened? Um, no, to be honest, um, we haven't had that before. Uh, as I said, you know, we run this competition for Namibians. We mm. don't run it for any ethnic grouping, um, and 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 even you know the suggestion of and there's been lots of suggestions on um, social media this week about giving preference or priority to one particular ethnic group mm. um, it really is, is, is quite derogatory to us. Um, you know, we're not here to, to um, enhance one ethnic group over any other group. Um, we see Namibia through uh, national eyes, not, not uh, individual ethnic eyes. Um, and, do, and doing that would be totally wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a level playing field that everybody, every applicant, um, their only criteria to begin with is that they have a, a bachelor's degree yeah. in their chosen field of study. And that's the starting point. So every person with a bachelor's degree in this, in this country is eligible to apply for a chief new scholarship. Yeah. Um, so that's the only starting point we have. Yeah, and, and that is exactly where, it's, where, where it gets interesting. And, and I suppose if, uh, what happened on social media, the questions that were, the generic question was, okay, fine, uh, bachelor degrees, every ethnic group in, Nam in Namibia has multitudes of people with that. And then suddenly it came out the way it, it did. Um, I mean, Okay, fine. You you mentioned, for example, that uh, the Rambo people are the main group, which is true, really. Um, but I think we constitute. I'm, I'm Rambo myself, and we constitute about I think forty seven percent or forty eight percent of the population. Mm -hmm. And generally, the expectation of people is that the a process like that must also produce perhaps forty eight percent. Again, it's not strict mathematics, but mm -hmm. but somehow, uh, I think the way it came out now might be ninety five percent bamboos or so. Um, wh what is to be done, especially in the future? Do you say, okay, fine, this, the requirements are the way they are, and we we just live by that? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I I don't think there's anything to be done actually. Um, you know, the application process is open to everybody um, and we manage whenever we advertise uh, Chevening. And in fact, the application process is open now for another five or six weeks, I think. So go online, uh, find out about it. If you're eligible, then apply. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's, um, you know, we, we get up to about a thousand applications a year. Uh, so there are at least a thousand people who are aware of, of the eligibility for this. We engage with UNAM, with other universities. When I travel around the country to different regions, I quite like going to see the UNAM campus and any other um, educational establishments that are there. Uh, so we can we can we can uh, advertise it quite widely. Yeah. Um, anyone with a bachelor's degree is going to be um, online savvy. Um, they're going to have access to uh, all the information and and the application forms for Chevening. Yeah. Um, and then it's up to them. Um, as I said, we, 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 can't, we can't promote it to any particular ethnic group more than any other. Uh, we have to open it to everybody, and it is open to everybody. Yes. Um, so, and, and, and then uh, we're, we're subject to the applications we get, and then sifting, and then interviewing, um, and uh, taking the best candidates. Yeah. And it's worth pointing out, I mean, not that we're not that we're obliged to sort of give details of our uh, interview panel, but let me just say that for this year's competition, the Namibian who is involved on the panel is Damara. And so not even an Avambo. Mm. So, you know, accusations that we have Avambo panels or we're giving preference to that uh, I really, you know, I think uh, there, there are uh, some people on social media who are literally trying to make mischief out of this, uh, but for no good reason. And we're very happy to clarify how we do the process. Uh, it's a completely level playing field. Um, and, you know, we have uh, just stunningly good candidates from mm. Namibia, yeah. um, which maybe this year happened to be a majority of Arambo, um, but other years, 
um, have, have been a, a wide variety of, um, of ethnic origins across the country. And we're very proud of that. Yeah, wonderful. We go for just a very short break and then uh, we return with uh, High Commissioner Moore. Welcome to My Dot NA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Mosta. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind the scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss my dot NA cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. We are so excited to be kickstarting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past weekend. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. The conversation with uh, High Commissioner Charles Moore continues. Now, to those who are saying, and, and you've made it pretty clear that, look, you, you, you see the applicants through the national lens only and not their ethnic uh, identities, let's assume, and it's a very hypothetical, as hypothetical as it can ever be, that uh, in a predominantly black country like ours, for some reason, um, those that emerged out of this process were white. Uh, might be proportioned to the number of bamboos that have emerged in this process. Mm -hmm. What would have uh, been the outcome going forward? Well, I think, you know, it, it, there's always um, different perceptions. And um, I can see because, you know, I think um, Namibia has a very strong national identity. And, and I think the ethnic identities within Namibia, of what, whether you call it nine or 11 major ethnic groups, uh, is also very important to them. Um, and, you know, I, and I find it really interesting. I, mean, I spent probably 25 years of my life in Africa, so I, I understand um, the, the, the tribal systems in, in different countries. What I don't understand, um, and, and I, I, I tell people regularly that as a Westerner, we can never really understand the the um, the, the the depth of yeah. feeling uh, of tribal and ethnic affiliations, because we don't have that in in the UK. Mm. Um, you know, we have regional ethnicity like Scotland or Wales or Northern Ireland, but we don't have a tribal system, and the tribal system across Africa is is um, is is such a fundamental part of everybody's every individual's life yeah, yeah. Um, and that's something that as 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 a european i i, I can't quite easily uh, understand but i do understand therefore that if somebody looks at our list of achievements yeah. uh, and they see 13 names that they recognize as not as being predominantly from one uh, tribal grouping that they might question that um, all I can do is be clear and say that uh, you know there's 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 absolutely nothing behind that. It depends on the applications that we get, mm. and the sift, and then the interviews uh, to determine the um, to determine the successful candidates, um, which is I think the right way. Yeah. Um, but the other thing I would say is that I'm you know I'm equally surprised. Nobody's pointed out that there's a majority of women on uh, and among these achievement uh, scholars. Yeah. So out of 13, nine of them are women. Nobody's actually complained that there should be more of a balance between male and female. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but they've latched on to this sort of uh, the, the tribal grouping. Um, and I, un I understand why, but all I can do is clarify that um, at no part in the process does, does the ethnicity of somebody come into, come into play. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. I think uh, you have done justice, uh, High Commissioner, to the subject. Uh, if we can shift now to bilateral uh, relations uh, between the two countries, um, this chevening 
program has been running for so many years. Uh, is that one of the ways in which uh, you, the UK is showing really its commitment towards up uplifting lives of Namibians and the leadership qualities of our people? Indeed. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're very proud of the Chevening Scholarship Program, uh, which, as you say, has been running for many years. Um, here in Namibia, it actually means slightly more um, because Namibia is an upper middle income country and, and for that reason, the UK cannot provide um, a, a large package of overseas development, which, which we'd like to because I, I, um, I'm very aware that there are many parts of Namibia where um, upper middle income status shouldn't really apply. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's some really uh, severe poverty in this country, but we don't have the funds to help with that because we, the upper middle income status prevents us from yeah. having that sort of uh, um, resource. As a result of that, they, they compensate for that in, in, in other ways. And so Namibia, uh, we every country in the world gets an allocation of uh, Chevening scholarships. Mm. Uh, we get a higher allocation in Namibia than just about anywhere else in Africa, which is partly sort of compensation for the fact that we don't have a, a large aid program. Yeah. And so uh, we get, you know, it's been up to about 15 a year uh, that we get. I think it's currently about 11 or 12. But that's more. I mean, Kenya might only have three or four. Um, we get more because we don't have other, other packets of aid to use. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Um, the other good thing about Chevening is that um, we can work with partners in different sectors mm. to add more scholarships. So, for example, we have one partnership with the with the financial sector, one partnership with the oil sector, um, and those sectors can fund another Chevening scholar mm. and be part. Um, so, so we have um, uh, when, when we when we do uh, interviews for people who are sponsored by the finance side or the oil side, yeah. then representatives of those sectors join the panel uh, because they're funding them. So mm -hmm. the panel is then widened. Um, but we're open to more partnerships. Yeah. So if there's another sector in, in Namibia who would like to partner us and to sponsor uh, a Chevening scholarship, they're welcome to do so. We're very happy to, to talk to them about that. Yeah. Um, and that's another way of increasing uh, the, the, the offer and the educational offer that we can provide. Yeah. Do you think, High Commissioner, that um, um, because also the question of aid, that debate is, is huge in Africa, in mm. Namibia included, and mm -hmm. um, do, do you think things like uh, these scholarships are more sustainable, more meaningful interventions than uh, your, your everyday sort of donor interventions, um, I, I, they come in different packages, but mm. I think empowering communities through education, do you think mm. is a more meaningful way? Yeah, definitely. I think it was difficult to say what part of what part of aid is, is more important than any other part of aid. But I mean, education is certainly fundamental. You know, I'd like to do more in terms of um, more primary education, because I mean, that's childhood early development is where is, is really important. Yeah. But um, in terms of uh, in terms of achieving where we're positioning this is that we take people who have already uh, achieved a bachelor's degree and then they they can specialize they can do something for a year to get a master's degree in their chosen field yeah. which propels them to the next stage which puts them in a leadership position in their chosen field and that in itself helps the development of the country um, so, you know, when you have people who are, and it's not just about the educational experience of, yeah. of, of doing a master's in the UK, because people who go on achieving scholarships to the UK are, they're like a sort of family. Um, they're given opportunities to do so much more than study. So they go on visits, they go on day trips, they go on educational trips that are mm. beyond their, their uh, immediate study. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a, it's, an, it's a life experience as well. And that all helps when they come back to their home country to, uh, to, to, to cascade that information and also to uh, promote the benefits of, uh, of tertiary education. Yeah, wonderful. 
I think in, in closing now, um, High Commissioner, um, and I know that you have done justice to the conversation, but uh, I think I, I must still you must still throw the last dice, mm -hmm. and that is really to just state on record, because um, the things that have been said were really bad this week. Some of them were very damaging, and, and I understand why you are saying they were derogatory. Again, just to put on record that this whole thing was above board, it was on merits and stuff. Yeah, um, and as I said, I was, we were quite taken aback by, by the reaction because we haven't had any sort of reaction like that before. Um, you know, I think uh, people, people, some people, I think, are, 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 looking, for, um, are looking for discrepancies. Um, and I think all we can do is um, offer clarity and transparency. Um, you know, people have been asking us to issue a list of applicants. I mean, we're clearly not going to do that because of, of data protection regulations apart from anything else. But, you know, that sort of suggestion is not helpful um, because then somebody would pour over all the surnames that, uh, of people who applied and then what, what, what good does it do? Um, all we can do is state that uh, we have a very open process. We have a very level playing field. Um, if it turns out that the majority ethnic grouping uh, forms the majority of the successful candidates, um, that's not something that's designed by us. It's something that is um, that happens through the process. Yeah. And you know, we, we would be delighted if there were more applicants from. Uh, the minority ethnic groups, um, we'd be absolutely delighted. So get the message out there. Um, anyone who holds a bachelor's degree from any of the minority ethnic groups in this country, please do apply. Um, and we would be delighted to see more and more candidates applying for achieving scholarships. Uh, we will welcome them to the Chievening family. And the Chievening alumni uh, in Namibia we have lots of minority uh, ethnics, yeah. uh, ethnic Namibian groups. So, and as I said, the one who was on the panel was Damara. Yeah. So um, maybe this is uh, an anomaly, maybe it's a one-off. But, um, but I mean, if, if people at least give us the benefit of understanding when we respond yeah. uh, to say that there was no preference given, um, I think that's the least we can ask. Um, we're always happy to be uh, to be open about it, but I think sometimes people on social media look for uh, look to make challenges which which um, are, are pretty groundless. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm thank you for the opportunity for clarifying this situation. Absolutely, um, yeah. I'm delighted to do so and any other opportunity as well. Wonderful. But um, it's uh, it's it's very helpful to be able to uh, to clarify the issue about achieving scholarships and to encourage more people to apply. Absolutely. No, no, thank you, High Commissioner. I think uh, you've given us more than we have uh, we had bargained for. I mean, uh, for example, I like the, the, the structure of the... We wouldn't have known the structure of the, of the panel that, uh, that presided over this process. So I think that is a very important piece of information. But the rest of the conversation has been very, very nice. Thank you for making time. No, oh, thank you. Yeah, wonderful. That is uh, a British High Commissioner to Namibia, Charles Moore, uh, just filling us in on what uh, processes that uh, take place whenever the achieving uh, scholarships are being uh, awarded to Namibians. Thank you for watching.